So here's a video I wanted to do for a while, um, comparing the more or less 80s model 420, 430 type garden tractor to the 90s 425, 445, 455. In 1992, um, Deere replaced uh, the 318, the 316 Onan, the 322, 332, the 420, and the 430 with a new lineup of garden tractors. Some of which had already been out. For instance, the 318 was more or less replaced by the 285, 320, things like that. Meanwhile, the 420 and the 430 was re were replaced with the 425, 445, and 455. Um, the 420 was more or less replaced with directly with the 425, and the 430 was directly replaced with the 455. In fact, uh, the 430 and the 455 both have a Yanmar TNA 72UJ engine. <clears throat> so. What I want to do in this, kind of, I, I'm pretty sure it'll be a series of videos, is I want to demonstrate how far um, deer came in 1992 as they phased out the old 400s and brought in the new 400s. Um, and I think it's, it's worth a, just kind of a, a brief history on both units. Uh, the 420 came out in 1984. Maybe it was 1983 as well. I can't remember if the 420 came out the same year as the 318. I want to say it did. Um, so anyway, early 80s, the 420 comes out powered by a B48G um, Onan engine, 20 horsepower. Uh, came with a 60 inch or 50 inch deck. Um, basically just a much larger version of the 300 series. Uh, meanwhile, in 1992, the 425 came out um, it is a Kawasaki powered 20 horsepower engine that's a V-twin. Now I, I think it's really important to note that the Kawasaki is water cooled and the Onan and the 420 is air cooled. Um, now that certainly lends itself to some major changes. Obviously you can sit on one side of the fence or the other. Uh, some people say well I really like um, I really like air-cooled engines because they're less maintenance. Meanwhile, other people say, oh, I really like uh, water-cooled engines because they, they maintain the temperature a little bit better. So I'm going to wander around here. That way you're not trying to just stare at the same things um, as, kind of as I talk. Uh, so basically, um, big changes. Well, I'll go ahead and start with the 420. 420, great machine, um, Sunstrand 15U pump uh, powered by the engine, hydrostatic, both these machines are hydrostatic, uh, two-speed transaxle, high and low, and locking differential. Uh, the 15U pump on, on the Sunstrand uh, coupled with a peerless differential um, made pretty much the powertrain of the 420 more or less bulletproof. Uh, very few of the Sunstrand 15Us uh, go bad. Uh, in fact, they are still making those pumps today. Uh, much like uh, they're not making the transaxles anymore, but they are still making the 15U pumps. Um, uh, turning brakes. Uh, the reason I'm pointing these out because these are things I'll talk about in the 425 turning brakes. Uh, and then the last thing that's on the 420 that would be very similar uh, to the, or what we would not have after the 420 and 430 is the H3. Um, so to kind of highlight some of those, uh, and oh, and hand, hand controlled hydrostat and a electric clutch that is dry, and I'll talk about that here in just a minute. So we step into time, we step forward about 10 years in time, and we have the 455. On the 455, or the 4, 425, uh, the 425 still has the locking differential. Uh, however, it does no longer, it no longer has turning brakes, and it has only H2 instead of H3. However, what we have gained is instead of a hand hydrostat, now we have foot pedals. Um, foot pedals, for those of you who have not used foot pedals, because you're using the four older, older series, um, foot pedals are really, really nice. Um, I used a 318 for many years. Um, the hand hydrostat certainly kind of, I mean, it's just second nature to me. 
um, but the, the foot pedals make life so much nicer. Uh, now, coupled with the foot pedals, on the 425, uh, the Sunstrand 15U pump was ditched, uh, along with the Peerless transaxle, and all of that became the K91 Tough Torque transaxle. Um, the K91 is actually still, it's, the K91 specifically is still not in use, but even the current uh, Deer series, the X7s, uh, use a K92 transaxle. Same, basic same architecture as the K91. Um, I actually have a video series of me tearing apart a K91. Um, I, this is just my opinion. I think if you stack these two transaxles up to, next, up to each other, um, I don't think one will win over the other. Uh, they're both very, very solid units. I have the utmost respect for both units. Um, I would probably pick, personally, I would probably pick the K-Series from Tough Torque, um, either the K91 or the K92, merely because of the fact you can run on you can run onboard hydraulics, specifically an onboard loader um, with the 4-5 machines. Um, so that's the big change there, but with the, the K91, uh, we uh, deer ditch the dry clutch that is on the front of the uh, Onan back here. So you can see the, the dry clutch, the electric dry clutch on the Onan. Um, and the deer picked up in the mid mount PTO um, for the K91. It is a wet clutch. Um, and so the clutch packs uh, basically are all controlled by hydraulic fluid in the 425, 445, 455. So those are the, some of the major changes. Um, probably some of the bigger, um, you know, if I had to pick between these two machines, I don't necessarily think I could pick because the 420 is definitely a little bit more rough and tumble. Um, you know, it's all metal and or fiberglass. The seat, uh, the fender pan is metal. The side panels are metal. The hood is fiberglass. Meanwhile, on the 425 here, and I know a lot of people complain about this. Um, the fender pan's metal, the footrest is metal, uh, but the side panels and the hood are all plastic. Um, that is probably one of the biggest drawbacks of these machines, because uh, you can easily, and if you buy a used one, you can easily go spend five or six hundred dollars on plastic and decals and everything else. Um, so now let's talk about the shortcomings. The 420, one of the biggest shortcomings is its size. Um, it's a big machine. Uh, in fact, on a, on a footprint basis, it's a little bit bigger than the, the 4-5 machines. Uh, the air-cooled Onan typically is gonna be good for 1,000 to 1,500 hours. Um, the transaxle's good pretty much for life. Uh, I think you'd wear out way, a lot of components before you wore out the transaxle. Um, one of the big negatives is the hand hydrostat, which we've already talked about. Um, and then uh, basically the PTO. Um, electric clutch on the PTO, there's lots of wearable components. Uh, one of the biggest things that wears is the front PTO pulley, uh, which is underneath the tractor, which we'll talk about as we kind of uh, disassemble it. But it's basically that pulley down in there. Um, it wobbles on the shaft quite a bit if things aren't kept up. Uh, so that is certainly one of the bigger problems. Uh, other than that, you know, the 420 was pretty much trouble free. Um, you know, nowadays because of its age, it's obviously got some, some carb issues and things like that. Uh, there's worn out components, the transaxle leaks, the pump leaks uh, out of the check valves, things like that. But I think that's all mostly just associated with age. Um, on the 4-5 machine, specifically the 425, 445, um, you know, electric or the the wet clutch is by far amazing. Uh, I've seen those clutches with 3,000 plus hours on it, and they're still working just fine. Uh, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest benefits of the liquid cooled engine, is obviously the hours of service. Uh, there's no reason you shouldn't get two, three thousand, four thousand hours out of a water cooled Kawasaki. However, uh, up until from 1992 until 1998, about mid-year 1998, all of the cam gears were nylon. 
Um, so somewhere between about 600 to 1,000 hours, the nylon cam gear would go, and you'd have to spend, if you have it serviced to a dealer, it'd be 1,200 bucks now. Um, and if you do it yourself, it's gonna be about 500. Maybe you could do it a little bit cheaper. Uh, I haven't priced that out recently. Uh, but the nylon cam gear is pretty much the biggest attraction for these units. Other than that, they're pretty rock solid. Um, the, the tough torque transaxles are amazing. Uh, they'll, they'll last you know, four to 5,000 hours just like the Sunstrand 15Us. So um, that's it for kind of a primer for the comparison between the 425 and 420. Um, and so next what we're gonna do is I'll actually uh, take the side panels off, things like that in the next video. And we'll start talking about the different architectures of the engine, things like that, the opposed twin, twin in the 420 versus the V-twin in the 425. Uh, and we'll talk about the similarities, chiefly being the deck in this particular case. Uh, if you notice, the 60 inch deck on the 425 looks eerily similar to the 60 inch deck on the, on the 420. So um, that'll be the next video coming up. So thanks for watching.